Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jenna, and this is not the type of video I normally do. Um, I started this channel as like a pregnancy blog type thing, but I've gained lots of friends on here, so I figured I'd do a QA. and um, I asked like weeks ago on my Instagram if any of you had questions, and <laughs> I did get questions. I just have filmed this before and I rambled and rambled and I feel like I didn't answer some of the questions the way I wanted to in the way that they should have been answered. So I'm here a couple weeks later making this video. Sorry it's so late for those of you who actually ask questions, but let's get into the Q&A. So just a little, um, it's not really a disclaimer, but just to let you guys know, this whole video is pretty much all um, questions about my faith and about God, which is great. Um, but if you're looking for like a pregnancy Q&A, this is not that. Anyway, let's really get into it now. So the first question is the only question regarding birth and pregnancy and not faith. <laughs> but the first question is, are you going to get the epidural? And um, I'm not planning on it. I'm not against the epidural. I just don't want it personally. I've read about it and I've um, heard stories of people who've gotten the epidural and then also haven't gotten the epidural and just my own personal preference, I feel like I would like the recovery better of not getting the epidural. Um, but like I said, I'm not against it if the doctors think that it will help my labor progress faster um, or if it's necessary for the baby and I then I'll definitely get it. <laughs> but I am hoping to go unmed unmedicated. One, just for my own mental, I don't know what, the mental state, I guess. I feel like I'll be more um, calm if I'm in control and like can feel everything going on. Um, I don't think I would like not feeling my legs. <laughs> Who knows, once I'm actually in labor, like I might just wanna do anything to get out of the pain <laughs> but for now I feel like I wouldn't like not feeling my legs and then also like having the feeling come back to you you'd go from feeling like nothing to all the pains of afterbirth I don't know I just I'm gonna try not to get it <laughs> so the next question we're gonna dive into like the faith and personal questions um, so this first question and the second question, I'm gonna kinda tie together because they kinda go together. It's not from the same person, but I'm gonna tie them together. First question that I'm gonna answer is, what would you describe a relationship as God? <laughs> what would you describe a relationship with God as? And this is the one I ramble on. Every time I have tried to film this question, I ramble for like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna try not to do that. But one, let me just try to gather my thoughts. How I would describe having a relationship with God is you are constantly pursuing to learn more about God, what God's word says, um, what he wants for you, what he expects of us. Um, pursuing to do what God says is right and what God says is pure and righteous. Obviously we're all simple and we cannot be perfect and we cannot follow all of the commandments because we're imperfect and sinful people. But we should do our best to follow his commands. To have a relationship with God means you love him and you want to please him and um, you know what his word says. Just trying to always have a better and growing understanding of who God is Truly, not who you want God to be, but who God says he is in the Bible. So ultimately, just following his commands, praying, that's so important. You wouldn't have a relationship with someone, not that I'm comparing God to your boyfriend, but you wouldn't have a relationship with someone and not ever talk to them, not ever um, thank them for things, not ever tell them what you're struggling with, not ever ask them for help with anything. Like, you're in this relationship with that, with that person, that you're gonna try to get closer to. And with God, having a relationship with Him means that you're going to strive to get closer to Him. So you're not just gonna be fine staying where you're at because truth is, you're never staying where you're at. You're either growing towards Him in a good direction or you're falling away. I hope that that answers that question. Just trying to get closer to Him and striving to 
be more like Jesus. I'm rambling again, so I'm gonna try to like slim that down a little bit. <laughs> but the next question that I said kind of goes with this is how do you keep God your top priority? The reason that I say these two kind of go together is because when you have a close relationship with God and you truly love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, then he will be your top priority. But I can't just sit here and say that I do that all the time. Um, we are commanded to keep God as our top priority. No one can serve two masters. You shall know that God's before me. Um, but it's so easy as, like I said, sinful humans to make idols out of things and people and hobbies and whatever. Like we can make idols so easily. Our spouses can become our idol. Our boyfriend, girlfriend can become your idol. Um, your social image could become an idol. Money, your job, sports, whatever it is, we can always make an idol. If we're putting something in front of God, then that's an idol and that's not keeping God our top priority. Now, I would love to keep God my top priority and that's what I try to do. Whenever I don't keep God my top priority, then that's when my life starts to become a big struggle. Um, so how I would say I strive to do that is going back to the last question, having a relationship with God um, and always trying to put talking with him and listening, reading his word by listening, that's what I mean, reading his word as a priority. Um, because you can't have God your top priority if you don't have a close relationship with him. So I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. Um, another thing I was going to mention about this topic is that Another way to try and make sure God is your top priority and try to strive for that is to be constantly examining our lives and our hearts. So, like for me, sometimes I notice a lot that my husband, Josh, is, um, I'm putting him above God. It's so easy when you love someone or something so much that you would do anything for them and then it just becomes like they're your priority, whereas it should be flopped. God should be our top priority and then if he's our top priority, then we're automatically going to be caring for our spouse better. And that's just like, for, I'm kind of talking to myself because the main thing I keep, the main thing I sometimes notice as my idol is my husband. So that's why you have to examine and make sure you're not putting anything above God. And if you are, then pray about it, repent. So just evaluate your heart and your mind and where your priorities are at. And if you realize that they're not, your priority isn't God, then that's when you take a step back and you start again and you make God your top priority. I know I'm rambling a lot. I'm gonna try to make these next ones shorter. <laughs> so the next question is, what's your favorite worship songs? And this is such a hard question because I love music and I love worship songs and they change all the time. But I will tell you my favorites at the moment. Okay, my first one I'm gonna say is, um, this is kind of like a whole album, so, but Shane and Shane has a really great album and it's called Psalms Volume 2. And I love all those songs because they're straight from Psalms. Like they're not, um, I mean, they are based off Psalms, but they have the true scripture in the song. So like, I'm trying to explain it, but you can listen to the song and also read along in your Bible, like it's straight out of the Bible. So I like that because you know it's not unbiblical. And my favorite ones of those are Psalm 16, which is called Fullness of Joy, Psalm 23, which is also called Surely Goodness, Surely Mercy, and then the other one is Psalm 27 called The One Thing. So I like that whole album. I could say those whole that whole album is my favorite, but those are my three favorites on the album. And like I said, you can literally go to that chapter in Psalms and read along with the song. And that's so awesome. And it also helps you memorize. The, like, whenever you like a song, you automatically memorize it. So that way, when you memorize that song and it's stuck in your head, the Bible and God's Word is stuck in your head. Like, I just love it. I don't know. I can't explain it. But, and then the second one I would say is... Not the second one. And then another one of my favorites is called I Stand in Awe. And it's by Sovereign Grace Music. I have one more. It's called You Are Holy and it's Isaiah 6. I don't really know which artist I like the best because we just sing it in church and that's why I like it. But I found one that sounds good. It's just really theatrical. So if you don't like that, then... But the lyrics in it are so good. And it's, again, from the Bible. So I just love it. It's um, 
You Are Holy, Isaiah 6 by Radiant Worship, and that's on Spotify. So, you should look up that one, because that one's just a very, like, powerful um, worship song, and I love it. So yeah, I hope that you got some good uh, ideas for songs to listen to. Um, but I have so many more, so message me and I'll tell you like all of them. The next question is, what book has really helped you strengthen your faith and also your top five favorite verses? So this is technically two questions, so we'll split them up. What book has really helped you in your faith? Um, that's hard because I feel like every time you sit down and study a book, you automatically grow in your faith just because, like I said, it is God's word and you're always going to learn something. I will say the ones that have really influenced me, I don't know why, but I'm going to just tell you them. Hebrews and Ephesians. So I'll start with why I like Ephesians. Ephesians is just very like straightforward. Like it gives good instructions to believers. So when you sit down and just read it, there's like so much info coming in on how we should be um, living and loving and just being. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I just remember reading that book and studying it and writing so many notes on it because there was so much that I took from it. Um, and you can go back and just constantly learn something new every time you read it. So I'd really recommend studying Ephesians if you haven't. And then the second one is Hebrews, and I don't know why that one has stood out to me, but I also remember going through that one, and my eyes were just open to a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I would say those two, Ephesians and Hebrews. And then also your top favorite, top five favorite verses. So I did have to write those ones down. I'm going to read them from my Bible so you know I'm not just like making it up. <laughs> okay, so the first one is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And this is kind of like my life verse, I guess. I don't know. Ever since I've come across this verse, it's been my like verse I hold on to because it helped me through a really hard time in my life. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who, and God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. And I love that, because it's not saying that as Christians, or just humans in general, we won't ever face temptation, because we will. But it's saying that no matter what you're going through, no matter what temptation you're facing, you're not the only one who's been through it. Um, and you're not the only person who's being tempted with it. And with that, God will always provide a way of escape for you. That's always been a verse that has helped me through a lot of things. The next one is Psalm 16, 1 through 2. Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, I have no good besides you. And I love that one because it's just a very humbling verse. I'm nothing without God. I am not a good person. I'm not, uh, I would be nothing without God. So um, I like that because he's our everything. And he is the only thing that can make us pure. Okay, Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. I feel like that one's just kind of self-explanatory. Hebrews 2, verse 18. For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. And that's talking about Jesus. That's talking about how Jesus, when he was on this earth, suffered a lot. So he was tempted a lot because when you're suffering, things tempt you. <laughs> I think that's really comforting to know. Just like that he is there for us and does know what we're going through. Um, and then Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that one's also kind of self-explanatory. Where we put our treasure, where we have our priority, that's where our heart is. So if our treasure is not on God, then our heart's not on God. So just, I like that verse a lot. <laughs> but, all right, that's kind of a weird note to end on. But I do have one more question. This one's from my dad. And <laughs> he said, what's your dog's name? Jan or dad. His name's Janner. 
<laughs> okay, um, that's all for this video. I hope that you got some insight into who I am a little bit more personally. I hope I didn't ramble too much, and I hope I also answered your questions thoroughly. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, and I'll have lots of baby updates on there, especially now that we're nearing our delivery day. Crazy. Next week, I'll have my 30-week update up. I should, at least. I'm not going to make any promises, but I think I should have my 30-week update up. So, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, maybe. <laughs>